so yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Jed Coffin. I am uh, a professor in the English department where I teach uh, creative writing. Um, it's been a pretty wild semester, as you can imagine, but we are doing our best to, to, to just keep moving forward. Um, as promised, I thought that for story time today, I would read two books that, um, that I used to read my kids. It makes me a little sad to say that I used to read to my kids. They're six and 12. I have two daughters. Um, we live in Brunswick, Maine. Uh, I have a very long commute to work, but um, I get to, to see a lot on the way there um, out the windows of the Amtrak down Easter. So uh, I thought I would read these two books um, by the same author. Um, the first one is called Hush. The author is named uh, Min Fong Ho. And um, she is, uh, I, I love these books because for most of my childhood, I didn't have the opportunity um, to read books that were about um, the places where my family came from. Um, again, at, growing up in Maine, the books that came my way were a lot of classic New England favorites like Blueberries for Sal or Miss Rumpheus or Make Way for Ducklings. Um, and so when my kids were born, I went out looking for books about Thailand so that they could learn about where uh, my mother's side uh, of, of the family comes from. So um, these books are, are really neat. There's a lot of animal sounds in these books. And one thing you'll notice is that the way that people in Thailand hear the sounds that animals make is really different than the way that we associate sounds with animals. So um, for instance, you'll hear a frog say gop gop instead of, uh, gosh, what a frog say? Uh, Radeep, right? Or whatever we say in English. Um, so, uh, and you'll hear a bunch of different sounds and you'll probably meet some animals that you've never seen before. Um, water buffalo, for instance. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is that while I'm reading about these different animals, I might take a second to say, um, or, or to pronounce uh, the word for that animal in Thai. So if you hear me say, water buffalo, and then, for instance, we'll hear me say kwai after that. Kwai is the Thai word for water buffalo. Um, so let's get into these books. They're, um, again, it's, it makes me a little sad to think that um, I haven't read them, but it brings me a lot of joy to revive them. I actually had to pull them out of the attic. Um, so the first book is Hush by Min Fong Ho. Hush, who's that weeping in the wind? Wee, 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 a small mosquito. And the Thai word for mosquito is yung. Mosquito, mosquito, don't come weeping. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Mosquito, mosquito, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. Hush, who's that peeping from the ceiling? Tuke, tuke, a long tailed lizard. Lizard, lizard, don't come peeping. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Lizard, lizard, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. Hush, who's that creeping under the house? Meow, meow, a lean black cat. Black cat, black cat, don't come creeping. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Black cat, black cat, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. Hush, who's that squeaking by the rice barn? And this is the sound a mouse makes. 
GG, GG. Gray mouse, gray mouse, don't come squeaking. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Gray mouse, gray mouse, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. And if you look at the picture of where the little mouse is, you can see that it's buried in a pile of rice. So a lot of times in rural Thailand, um, in the same way that you might have flour in your cabinet, people will have storages of rice, sometimes in barrels um, in their houses. Hush, who's that leaping by the well? Oh, 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 a bright green frog. Green frog, green frog, don't come leaping. Can't you see the baby sleeping? Green frog, green frog, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. Hush, who's that sniffling in the sty? Ooh, 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 a muddy fat pig. And the Thai word for pig is mool. It almost sounds like this, um, what a cow would say, mool, M-O-O, but it's got an accent, so it goes moo. Fat pig, fat pig, don't come sniffling. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Fat pig, fat pig, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. And here is mool. And in Thai, because there are two pigs, you would say moo song an, two pigs. Hush, who's that beeping by the pond? Gap, 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 a glossy white duck. White duck, white duck, don't come beeping. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? White duck, white duck, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. The Thai word for duck, this is a fun word to say, is bet. Almost if you were to spell it, it would be B-E-T, bet. Hush, who's that swinging from the trees? I have a feeling that some of you might know what swings from trees. A monkey. But instead of saying, um, making a monkey sound like we might, which is, this is going to be silly, but it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. in Thai, you would say, tia, tia, a loose-limbed monkey. And the Thai word for monkey, this is another fun one to say, is ling, L-I-N-G, ling. Monkey, monkey, don't come swinging. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Monkey, monkey, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. Hush, who's that sweeping at the hay? Oh. That is a water buffalo. Mao, mao, an old water buffalo. Buffalo, buffalo, don't come sweeping. Can't you see that baby's sleeping? Buffalo, buffalo, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. And the word again for buffalo is kwai, kwai, K-W-A-I, kwai. Hush, who's that shrieking through the forest? Humpra, humpra, a great big elephant. Wow, look at the size of that elephant. So, humpra, humpra, because there are a lot of elephants in Thailand, and in fact, the elephant is the symbol of Thailand, just like the chickadee is the symbol of Maine, um, the uh, elephant is often the, seen as the symbol of Thailand. Um, we don't really have a word I don't think for the sound an elephant makes in America. Um, but in Thai, it's pretty common to say humpra, humpra. And the Thai word for elephant, another fun one, is chang, chang. Elephant, elephant, don't you cry. My baby's sleeping right nearby. I think the mom finally got the baby to sleep. 
hush, is everyone asleep? And you can see the house where the baby's sleeping. If you notice right, oops, right here, the house is up on stilts in this book. So it's up on sticks. Uh, my family used to have a house like this uh, in the village where my mother is from. Um, it's built on stilts because, uh, for one, it doesn't get very cold in Maine. Uh, excuse me, it gets very cold in Maine. Um, it doesn't get very cold in Thailand. And so it sometimes is cooler to have the house up high, but also every, um, what we would think of as wind, uh, spring, late spring, the, the water rises in the canals and water sometimes flows under the houses and you need to paddle boats between houses, which it could be a lot of fun. And so it's good to have your house up high off the ground. So here's a beautiful picture of a village in Thailand in the mountains. You can see the house has a grass roof, mountains above it, all the animals sleeping on the property. So the animals are finally quiet, but all is quiet, all is still. The mother dozes at the windowsill. Nothing stirring, not a breeze as the moon drifts up above the trees. There is no noise now. There is no sound. Up. Oh. Only babies wide awake, his eyes bright and round. And if you can see where the baby's sleeping, it's not a crib. The baby is sleeping in a hammock, which is a pretty traditional um, way for uh, little kids to sleep. They sleep in hammocks up off the ground. My mom used to tell me that the reason you don't sleep, put a baby on the ground is because sometimes lizards crawl in your bed, um, which uh, that would be exciting, huh? All right, so I hope you enjoyed Hush. Um, and just for a, a little more Thai lesson, the way that you say um, baby in Thai is dek dek. The way you say mother is meh. Um, so a little bit different. I've been trying to teach my kids to say those words, um, but like me, when I was a kid, they kind of insist on using the English. Okay, so another book by this author, Min Fang Ho. Um, this book is called Peak. And where the last book was about um, a son and his mother, this book is about a daughter and her father, which speaks a little more to my situation at home. So, you can see there's a little girl sleeping under what looks like a white sheet. And that, for those of you who, um, you know, haven't uh, been in Southeast Asia before, you'll notice that that's a mosquito net. So it's a net to prevent bugs from biting you in the middle of the night. Um, it's almost like a tent. It's kind of fun to sleep under those. Um, it does feel like you're camping even though you're in your own house. So. Shoot a baby peekaboo. Want to play? Where are you? So now we've got a dad looking for his little girl. Swip, 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 swip. Shoot a peekaboo. Oh, hi, dragonfly. Is that you? Stop that tickling in my ear. Is my baby hiding here? Oh, looks like the baby's hiding. You can see her sneaking around up back there. And this is going to surprise you a little bit. This is the sound a rooster makes in the Thai language. Iki, iki, eh. Iki, iki, eh. Jute peekaboo, red tailed rooster. So it's you. Flap your wings in the cold dawn air. Is my baby somewhere near? And if you look closely, you can see that the baby seems to be hiding behind those sticks. Kuru, 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 kuru. Jute peekaboo. Oh, puppy dog. It's just you. Let's see if we can find that puppy dog. There he is. Sniff behind the rattan chair. Is my baby crouching there? 
Another neat thing to notice in this picture is if you can see that big brown pot right there, that is um, for collecting rainwater. So during rain season in Thailand, which begins, like I said, in April, our April, um, and continues usually through the fall, um, that's those big pots collect rainwater that um, can be used to wash dishes, wash clothes. Um, uh, sometimes if you boil it, it can be used for drinking water. Tum tum, tum tum. Chute peekaboo, green back turtle, so it's you. Dive beneath the water clear. Is my baby splashing here? And you can see the father talking to the turtle. And I think you can probably see that his daughter is sneaking around the river a little bit. Oh, here is the monkey again. You remember that the monkeys, uh, the word for monkey in Thai is ling, ling. Tia, 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 tia. Tute, peekaboo, furry monkey. Is that you? Perched up high in the Banyan Fair. Is my baby swinging there? And looks like we can see the baby hiding in the tree a little bit. Go, 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 go. That's the sound this bird makes. Jute, peekaboo. Oh, hornbill. So it's you. Stop that drilling so I can hear if my baby is somewhere near. This baby is getting pretty good at hiding from her dad. Hiss, 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 hiss. Jute, peekaboo, slithery snake. It's only you, coiled behind the orchard rare, watching with that glinty stare. Ooh, that's a little scary. There's a snake. I have seen some very big snakes in, in Thailand. Um, sometimes I've seen people, some of the older people in our village, I've seen them walk around downtown with snakes wrapped around their necks. Kind of scary. Um, an interesting thing about these pictures is if you see this little building right here, it's kind of like a tiny little church. And a lot of times in the villages in Thailand, you'll see these tiny little buildings hanging up in trees and they're actually called uh, spirit houses. And it's believed that if you have these um, places for spirits to go, um, they'll bring good fortune to your community. Um, so a lot of times you'll see little candles or incense burning in front of the spirit houses. Um, and uh, flowers hanging from the houses that people bring to put on the spirit houses, or um, sometimes little, little trays of oranges or um, uh, different kind of desserts um, to, as an offering for the spirits in the house. It looks a little bit like bird houses, but they're actually for spirits. Um, and in Thailand, I guess because we're coming up on Halloween, people really believe that ghosts uh, exist in everyday life um, in the village. So at night, most kids in at least my mom's village, we used to say like, don't go out at night because we think the ghosts might be out tonight. So it's a little bit like Halloween is every night in rural Thailand. All right. Humpra, humpra. Chute, peekaboo, oh elephant, so it's you. Lift the flap of your floppy ear. Is my baby hiding there? So remember, the name for elephant is Chang, and you can see the baby running away. I have pictures of my mom when she was a little girl riding on top of elephants while the elephants were doing work in her village. Um, elephants are very strong in their trunks, and um, in the same way that you might see, oh, a crane or a bulldozer lifting really heavy things in your neighborhood. When my mom was little, she used to see elephants doing that work, lifting whole trees and moving them from place to place. Krom kram, krom kram, jute, peekaboo, lazy crocodiles, it's just you. What a smile you have, what a sneer. 
I hope my baby is nowhere near. Uh-oh. Let's see if the baby's near the crocodile at all. Oh, good. I think the baby, yep, that's her umbrella. And I think she's already crossed the bridge. Ooh, this is a good one. Roar, roar, tute peekaboo, bright tiger, so it's you. Did you lure her to your lair? Did you eat her up in there? Uh-oh. I don't think that the tiger ate. Oh, there is the baby. If you can see her hiding in the bushes, she's pretty tricky. The Thai word for tiger, um, which is also a really common nickname uh, for little kids, is sua, sua. And a lot of times you'll meet a little kid and they'll say, what's your name? And it would be the same as if in English they said, oh, my name's Tiger. I think the father's getting a little bit fed up with all this hide and seek. Enough, baby, of this peekaboo. No more hiding. Where are you? And I think, can any of you see maybe, oh, there she is, hiding in the bushes. Oh, here she is. Jute Papa Peekaboo. Here I am. She finally came out. Um, and the Thai word for dad sounds a little bit like the Thai word for um, mom. Remember, the Thai word for mom is ma. The Thai word for dad is pa. Kun pa. I found you. And here is a beautiful illustration of all the animals that we've met. You can see their house up on stilts, oops, right there. You can see the ling, the sua. What else do we have? Chang, all the different animals, paw. And uh, for daughter, um, uh, the Thai word is lu, lu xao, lu xao. All right, and I think that is it. And the final image is a beautiful picture of a kite. So um, now I would be happy to take any questions you had about those books or about um, what life is like in rural Thailand, uh, at least the last time I was there, which was about 10 years ago. So if anyone has any questions for Jed, you can just type them into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Rochelle says, thank you. Thank you, Rochelle. <laughs> that was the first time I've read a kid's book on Zoom. It was fun. My kids definitely enjoyed it, and they were trying to say the words along with you. Awesome. So that was fun. And it was fun learning about all of the different, like the rainwater um, pot and how you store the rice and why the houses are on stilts. So that was really cool. Thank you so much, Judd. Absolutely. There's a lot to learn. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there is. Allison says, thank you. That was so great and so much fun. What are the seasons like in Thailand? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, they are not like the seasons in Maine, I will tell you that much. Um, in the winter, uh, it can be mm, a little bit cooler. Um, in the summer, what would be our summer, like I said, it's called rain season. Um, gosh, it's funny, once I start thinking about Thailand, I have trouble talking because I start thinking in Thai. Um, so in rain season, you call, the word for rain season is bon ritu, and um, it does, it rains a lot. Sometimes um, it rains so hard that you can't even hear yourself talk to people because the rain um, lands so hard on the metal roof uh, in the village. So a lot of houses, you know, we don't have heavy, thick, insulated houses. They're just very basic houses, and they have a metal roof on top. And I, I have so many memories of the rain just hitting the metal roof. And it just is it's the loudest sound you can imagine. And everyone just stops and looks at each other because the rain is so loud. So um, during rain season, it's a very fertile 
time, a lot of things are growing, the flowers are beautiful, but mostly it's just kind of hot all the time in Thailand. So um, I think typically, as I remember, I took about three or four showers a day with cold water and that's pretty normal in Thailand. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, another question uh, from Rochelle is, have my children visited Thailand? They have not yet. We are, um, we were hoping to go uh, this uh, next year. Um, and now we are wondering if that's going to be possible. Um, so uh, let's cross our fingers and hope that we can travel soon. So Pamela says, thank you so much. We enjoyed learning Thai words. And Marie says, wonderful books. Thank you for sharing them with us. And I'm just curious, Jed, what what's something that you really miss about Thailand and wish that you could bring back to America? Let's see. Um, the obvious one is food. I, mm. I really miss tropical fruit. I could eat 10 mangoes a day if given the chance. Um, and I just bought some mangoes from the Hannafords downtown and they were kind of rotten. And it might just be a fantasy, but mangoes in Thailand are never rotten. They're always perfectly red and bright yellow on the inside and, and golden sweet. Um, uh, I also miss um, the sense of community that is in Thailand. So um, little kids, uh, you know, like my daughter's age, six to 12 years old, every day they get up in the morning and they walk to school they all wear the same uniforms, um, white shirts, white blouses, and blue, blue skirts uh, for the girls, and white shirts and tan shorts for the boys. Um, and one of the first things they do is they sweep the school grounds. So the kids really care about their schools and take really good care of it. And then when a teacher walks into their classroom, um, it's, it's really neat what happens. It, it, um, and I've taught in Thailand a little bit. You walk into a classroom as a teacher and you stop in front of your class and you say, good morning, students. And the students all at once say, good morning, teacher, and then put their hands in front of their face and then bow on the ground three times. So it makes you feel really special when you're a teacher. Sometimes when I go into classrooms in the US, um, I have to say like, hey, everybody pay attention, but that doesn't happen in Thailand. So those kind of customs are really beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, you have another question. Where can I get copies of the books you read? read? I think that you can probably just, they're pretty well known. Um, one of them won the Caldecott Medal uh, several years ago, the, the Children's Book Award. And I think you can probably just get them at your local bookstore if you ask them to order them for you. Um, they're still in print and they're, uh, they're becoming really well known. And, and that's one of those things that just makes me really proud to know that a lot of kids who um, don't come from Thailand are, are starting to learn some things about um, my mother's country. Thank you so much for your time to, today, Jed, and for sharing Absolutely. books with us. We had so much fun. Um, I hope all of you kids out there enjoyed these books as well. Uh, our story time today was recorded and will be posted to our webinar library in a few days. So we encourage you to share it with family and friends. And I wanna thank everyone again for joining us today. And Jed, thank you again for being with us. Um, we hope everyone enjoyed story time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank everyone. you. Have a good morning. Good luck with everyone today. See ya.